Hello there, sword friends. Today I'm going to do an unboxing and first impressions of this sword right here, which is supposed to be a Taisuki S05 Osuraku-themed katana. Now this uh, was sent to me for free for review from Taisuki, so keep that in mind as you hear my babblings. Also, I'm opening it up and doing this because, well, because I figured some people might be interested in unboxing things and giving my genuine first impression sometimes seems to be entertaining, but also because FedEx, in their infinite wisdom, uh, thought that parking this in a snowbank and then sending me a picture that says, hey, we delivered it, it's in this snowbank right here. It was my mailbox, but at the moment it's basically a snowbank. Outside in public view uh, would be a good idea. I, I, that, that seems so strange to me. And nevertheless, I got it, um, but I did want to make sure that it didn't get too damp because the box was wet earlier today and whatnot. So I want to take it out and actually uh, make sure it's in good shape and whatnot. So anyway, it otherwise a seamless looks like it arrived Okay, I've removed my address information and whatnot. There's some crinkles over here on the box. It looks like they didn't kick it the entire way here, but I digress. Anyway, uh, box here comes in one of these things, and then there's the other side, and it usually has address information, but I took that off, because where it is, you see it's something like that. So first, I mean, generally speaking, got these little foam, foam inserts here that seem to keep the box in relatively good shape. Uh, the crinkles, it doesn't look like there's a lot of give on the box, and there's not a lot of room for it to bend, so hopefully the sword made it okay. Uh, there is a certificate of authenticity here. Taisuki gives the address, and then quality sign approved. It's not signed. <laughs> which, is, which is odd, it's got the date, um, anyway, you can see right here, the stuff that it has on it. This is, uh, I don't mind things like this, and I, I'm glad, like on one hand, this is uh, just like basic printer paper, and printed out on a laser printer. Um, it'd be nice if it had a signature on it as well, but um, these don't cost a lot, and sometimes people really enjoy them. And it's, it's pretty inexpensive to, to put it in there and, and put some stats on the swords. Uh, to me, it doesn't really add a whole lot, but I do understand that these certificates mean uh, are meaningful to some collectors and, and people, uh, particularly buying things at this price point. So, on the other hand, though, if you're going to do it at a sort of three thousand um, dollars, this is is really basic, as opposed to something uh, with better paper or printed or pressed or something a little bit more elaborate. Um, anyway, I don't I don't mind it. I'm I'm kind of on the fence about what to expect, like on a simple sheet of paper. It's kind of nice. On the other hand, uh, this, I believe, is if it's an SO5, it retails, uh, the website lists them for $3,000, which is a pretty substantial amount. So you kind of, you know, a cardboard box and a sheet of printer paper doesn't, doesn't necessarily seem the best. Uh, but at the same time, you're paying $3,000 for a sword, not a certificate of authenticity. So, uh, <laughs> so I kind of want all that money to be baked into what's in this bag right here. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. Uh, first, the, this is a nice silk bag. It has a, a pleasant feeling. The touch, it, it feels like genuine silk and of a reasonable grade. Uh, that's appreciated. A lot of times these silk bags are, uh, well, they're cheaper feeling. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I, but a lot of times these bags actually do get used and the sword uh, that you have will be stored in it for some time and wrapped up in here and spend a lot of its life potentially in the bag. So it's it's nice that it comes with a good quality one. This foam is kind of stuck on here though, and it's not too bad. It's not the worst packing foam. It's like a uh, carpet pad is almost what it's made out of. Okay. So straight out of the gate. thought there was a scratch here that was just a uh, little residue silk fiber or something like that. Very clean lacquer work. Uh, in previous videos that I've made about Taisuki, the transition between this piece and the ska right here was a little bit more jutting. Uh, this is still thicker than, than this, but not 
I've done custom projects that aren't really that much more. It's a little wider than I guess I'd like to see. At the same time, if you're a practitioner, if you use these, uh, this extra meat right here does tend to mean that it doesn't break and fray as much. I don't think it, it juts out in such a way that it, I find it as alarming as I did the previous previous blades that I've, I've reviewed from Taisuki. Um, it's also wrapped in like a cellophane kind of thing. This does not look like it is shrink wrapped on here, though this looks more like um, like a food wrap or something like that. So different material than I'm, I'm used to seeing it wrapped in. I'm trying to find the, the end of it to begin unwrapping. Oh, there's some euphemisms in there, I'm sure, as I unroll this condom from this thing. <laughs> Why is it so hard? There we go. You can look... Okay, that, that's enough. Um, right away, I can tell that this is tighter Ito than on the previous Taisuki Nihonto blades that I've, I've looked at. Now, it's still, I can tell, not perfect. And this is a very expensive sword, so what I'm hoping for at a sword of this price point is that I can't move these knots around at all. That there's, there's zero movement is really, I think, the goal um, at this price point. And I can move them a little bit. It still gets a pass. I mean, in the realm of mass production swords, this is would be considered, I think, verging on good, um, but still I can move them around. And I also notice uh, there's there's very little minor bits of fraying, it seems, in some spots. I'm being very nitpicky, you know, for a first impression video. Um, but the diamonds do look, they're on the smaller side, but they're all pretty consistent in shape, for the most part, anyway. Uh, this knot, I can make out Hishigami in here. Ooh, that knot wiggles around quite a bit. So there's there's still unfortunately it seems like Ito is is problematic now. Um, this was sent from Thailand uh, really quickly, uh, so th this was boxed out and sent. Um, I want to say less than a week ago it took to get here. So uh, the folks at Taisuki sent me no notification that it was coming. FedEx popped up and said, "Hey, we've we've got the order," um, and then it then it was here. So this Ito hasn't had. You know, weeks to shrink given the humidity differences. It's winter and it's quite dry where I live, and it's probably not in Thailand. So, um, but I don't think the the shift has really pulled every moisture a bit out of out of the wood just yet. So this may get may get worse. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I can note the skin though. The skin actually looks of a good quality, and it has a kind of a rounder, a little bit more bulbous handle. It's it's tied. Well, it, it feels a little bit, it's, on one hand, it's not particularly large, but it seems to be a little bit thicker in, in grip. It's not uncomfortable, though. Uh, the kashra seems on there tight. It's not wiggling around. And at a glance, this whole silver look is, is pretty special. So these are uh, real silver fittings, or they're supposed to be. And Taisuki, that's one of the things that they tend to do in their swords is use more precious metals than other swords do. So if you're a sucker for silver, and real silver at that, um, that's what these these are supposed to be. Now they are still cast, and for, well, for what I'm seeing here, they're pretty simple, and in, in honesty, I kind of like, like that more. Uh, it shows off the silver, and I think if you're gonna do casting, when you try to do really, really elaborate casting and don't pull it off, or the, the lines aren't as crisp as they could be, it really stands out as, as a miss. Um, but these these fittings have some some kind of taper and dimension to them. Uh, the casting lines look clean, and for what they're supposed to be, it looks like they pulled it off. And I think it has a a simple kind of elegant to it. I, I don't mind the overall look. I think it I think it's a handsome look. I have no no complaints about the fittings. And there's a silver centipede in here. Looks reasonably well cast. I can make out most of the details. It doesn't doesn't look bad at all. 
in here. And again, I can make out uh, some Igawa panels that appear to be, well, appear to be good. I don't know if it's a full wrap or not. Um, I will find that out later. And if I'm being really nitpicky, I can just make out some spots where the Ito, Ito is frayed just a little bit. Now, this is supposed to be a new sword sent to me, so I, I'm, I don't think it's been handled. I don't think it's a review sample or a prototype or something that's kind of made the rounds. But I, I will double check on that because if this is a review sample that, that people have kind of handed around or something like that, then I, I wouldn't be too surprised about some signs of handling, which is... Not entirely what I'm seeing here. I just see some, you know, some some spots that look imperfect in the Ito. And again, if I were paying three thousand dollars out of the gate here, a lot of people are going to expect perfection. In fairness, don't expect perfection. Uh, well, you can expect it, but don't realistically <laughs> expect it because uh, no sword that I've gotten has ever been perfect. Um, at the same time, you know, this amount of fraying and stuff like that, I I think it would irritate me if I spent three thousand dollars. Uh, this Ito is tied nice. This I like the the purple uh, shift here. It's it's kind of it's not jutting in, in in the strictest sense. This has kind of got a, a nice maroon kind of color to it, both on the Saya and matching uh, Ito, which is is tough to get a combination, frankly, that looks similar enough where one doesn't look off color. Um, the purple and the white, it's not necessarily a bad mix, but uh, I wouldn't mind something with the same maroon color in it, honestly. Uh, but having a third color isn't necessarily bad. Uh, the white and silver go well together. This Kurigata looks well placed. I like that it's made out of silver. The Kojiri, also very nice. It actually looks uh, placed on there reasonably well. It's not loose. There's a slight ledge on this side, but not substantial. I don't make out a bunch of schmutz and glue, at least right away. So uh, I think this Kojiri right here, this little end cap, is also very tasteful. And the side does have kind of a graceful taper. It starts to get really thin towards this like last four, four or five inches down here. Uh, but it does generally become pretty gradual and then takes a steeper tone here. Not, not bad. Uh, I like that it has some taper to it though. And I'm really glad that this transition here isn't, isn't as bulbous as on other iterations I've seen. It's thicker, but tastefully so, I would say. Uh, the Suba seems iron. It looks like it has a, a patina on it. There's no hot spots or anything. Um, looks very simple, and I don't notice kind of any dimension this way, which I think might be a little bit of a missed opportunity. It's pretty, pretty thin. Retention, rattle, nothing so far, but there could be some packing material in it, and the, the lacquer on here looks pretty good. There's very minor little bits of surface ripple and things like that in here, but overall pretty nice. The lacquer looks really good. There's no blisters or bubbles or anything like that here, and if I'm looking along the planes, it's nice to have perfect smoothness, but uh, not necessarily a requirement. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of things aren't here. The lacquer is really smooth, though, and I don't see any bubbles. Uh, I also don't see... Well, I can actually make out some. There, there are some, um, some indications that this was tied on too tight, so I can, I can make out some uh, kind of minor scuffing underneath the segeo here that indicates it might have been tied on a little too soon. They don't feel like they've imprinted those, so they might kind of, if I take a nice cloth to it and untie this, they might buff out. Okay, but no rattle. doesn't fall out. How's the pressure? A little on the, a little on the hard side to push out, but I can do it with one thumb. It's going to likely reduce over time. Really, uh, I like the, this is a nice little detail. So in the Kweguchi area, the mouth right here, the wood comes up between the panels, which is a, a nice little detail, not something I typically see. Usually the, the metal uh, surrounds all the way, uh, or it just, it, it's a ring, and then um, the wood of the scabbard is, anyway. The point is that this is kind of a direct replacement for horn. It's a little harder to do, and it's, it's pretty well executed. I like that. Okay, the blade. Now this is an Osiraku style blade, which is not something I see done, which means the Yakote is right here, and it's got this really big, massive Okasaki to it. It's just a different style of blade than what you typically see. I'm going to get a rag to wipe off the oil. 
Now, frankly, I'm not sure who else, if anyone, is making this style of blade right now. Um, I've seen some Wakazashi periodically from like a, a Ryan sword or something like that, uh, but I don't see at least commonly other katana. Now, in fairness, this is not a super beautiful polish. Um, I can make out the lamination line, I can make out folding, so that much is, is kind of cool to be able to see in the surface of the steel. Um, but in terms of polishing, so uh, the Osiraku Tanto thing, to, to do this effect from my understanding, and I could be totally off on this, but the, the polishing is instead of, I don't know, they change direction uh, the way that they're the polishing to bring this out. Now I can make out that it's an attempt at an Osiraku, but it looks like it's not finished. I can make out kind of tool markings and things like that, or, or more of an abrasive look, like it almost looks like it's the start of what will be an Osiraku rather than the, the finished bit, because polish that's completely finished off um, usually just has a, has a slightly you know, different, more refined look to it. So that is unfortunate. But is it straight? It's a reasonably straight line in the same place at least. Okay, that much is consistent. Planes on the blade, very clean. The profile is nice and it it does have a different profile than what I see out of a lot of Chinese swords. This tip uh, tapers down quite a bit more than than what I'm what I normally see. I'm not sure how osiraku -y it is, but it definitely cuts down a little bit more than than what I'm used to seeing. It doesn't reinforce or flare out on the Kasaki. Um, so I can make out um, a hada. It's not terribly bold, so it's not going to come through in the the camera work that I'm doing right now. It's not it's not kind of zazzy enough, if you will. Uh, but there are some, some nice bits of the polish, so the spine is kind of a mirror polish, and then as it enters the, the first, this only bevel of the blade, it has a kind of more subtle, opaque uh, kind of polish to it. The hamon is, is very visible, it looks like it's got a reasonable edge there, and I can make out uh, what looks like a, a core steel kind of lamination or uh, forge weld that's indicative of what you would typically see when you see a laminated style blade. So I think this is supposed to be a Hong Senmai or kind of a complex lamination. All right, sword friends, that is enough babbles for a first impression video. Frankly, it's probably enough babbles for a review, but that is not my review. I will do a review, I will do close-ups, I will do cutting, I will practice with it, uh, doing EI for, for a month or so, uh, and then I'll, I'll make a video and babble at you for another 30 minutes. Um, I am interested in hearing your thoughts so far, interested in hearing if you have any complaints or concerns about my plans for the sword. Uh, I will, as I noted, cut pool noodles, bottles, tatami mats, tatami mats poorly, where I'm then expecting it to start probably bending. Uh, it's on the robust side, so if it doesn't do that, I'm guessing it's going to bend when I take it to wood targets. An inch, two inches thick is all that I'm guessing going to take to start seeing it really show that it's at its limits. Um, start, start bending and the like. If I think, <laughs> if I were to whack it into the croquet stake of doom, I don't think it would take very many licks to get to the center of the Tootsie Pop. Chips, chips would start coming out and it would start, uh, start diminishing very quickly. Uh, anyway, um, I will practice with it. I will push it, but not necessarily to failure. I'm curious on your thoughts on that. I also want to say uh, thanks to Taisuki for sending this my way and maybe tell you a little bit about how it came to be in my possession. Uh, about five years ago, pre-pandemic, I went to Thailand with my family. My son hadn't been born yet. I toured around the country. It's beautiful. I made a video about it. It's, it's a wonderful spot. There's lots to see. And if you have a chance to go, highly, highly encourage it. I'm not sure what the travel situation is over there right now, but I, I do know as a tourist, I felt pretty safe and welcome and the food was delicious. And uh, anyway, it was a beautiful spot to go. And my wife was a good sport and let me go to Taisuki. There were some challenges in the scheduling. I didn't get to see the forge, uh, but I did get to meet Jack. I did get to see a lot of the different swords that they offer. I get to, did get to talk to him about the reviews that I made, and I, I'll, I'll link that video in the description down below. It's a bit aged now, but I, I did I did make one when I, when I went out there. Anyway, uh, the conversation about sending a review sample had stalled for a while, and I can't even remember what restarted it, but I, I reached out and said, hey, still, still open to, to doing a review. Uh, 
the folks at Taisuki or Jack specifically agreed and said, hey, we're going to send you something. Um, any thoughts on what? I thought just doing something from the higher line, the folded stuff would be more interesting. It's more uniquely Taisuki. It usually incorporates more silver and, and you know, some of the higher end stuff, which I think is, is some of the more unique and differentiating features that Taisuki offers. Some of those are available in the lower line swords, but they're certainly more prevalent in the higher line ones. Um, anyway, I opted to do this one. It's an Osoraku blade. It's kind of unique to what Taisuki does. Uh, and it's a, certainly a good introduction. Anyway, um, that's how it came to be. And I'm, I'm excited that I get to check it out and do some more stuff with it. So uh, again, thanks to Taisuki for sending it my way. I'm also glad that being parked in a snowbank didn't diminish it. It's also very cold outside right now. So sometimes lack of cracks in the cold, um, that didn't happen here. So I'm glad it's pretty representative of a new one coming out of the box. Anyway, um, that's all I got for the video. Anxious to hear what you guys think about plans for it. If you have any feedback so far, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, thanks again to Taisuki and cheers. And thanks for watching.